<laughs> There's a couple of things I want to mention here because we do. Um, uh, so so Kuznetsov, it's being reported by Frank Cervalli. I was a little early on that story and I it was a kind of a learning experience for me because Russian media can be extraordinarily unreliable. Who knew? Uh, <laughs> but Frank Saravalli is reporting right now that Evgeny Kuznetsov will be placed on unconditional waivers today for the purposes of a mutual contract termination. So few, I oh. skate on that one. But let that be a reminder to you. Don't necessarily trust it until, until we hear it from the North American side. Um, he must be getting up ton of money well he had six million dollars in real dollars his cap hit is 7.8 million but six million in real dollars still owed to him so you have to expect that he's making at least that in russia and i think the in thing rubles. is that well you, rub, aren't rubles like worthless right now <laughs> they are but you just pay more yeah, yeah no oh, shit yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. so the, no or they'll just pay him in american <laughs> dollars they can pay, pay him in american currency they can do that. I mean, it's the KHL. They'll do whatever they yeah. want. Yeah, I mean, he's it's they only, usually do. The team he's reportedly signing with is is the team owned by, as we said, Gazprom, which is the gas giant that sells all their natural gas and all that shit. Or used it's to sell it to times sixty four, a, oh, a dollar to wow. A, a it didn't ruble. used to be an, an American yeah. dollar or Canadian. Canadian. Ooh, a Canadian. Mm. Yeah. Ooh boy, that's uh, that's rough. So, that's wait, wait, bad. wait till they announce what he's making. I don't think that's crazy. Like if you look at the yen, the yen's like. Or no, I go know. there. Are things that are like a thousand dollars for an apple. You should go look up the contract Alex Radulov signed uh, when he left for the KHL. It's just a number that like you can't. Oh yeah, he makes like ninety thousand rubles a year. You're like, or no, sorry, ninety million. Yeah, you're just like, sorry, what does that mean? Yeah, what are you, what are you talking about? Um, yeah, Hurricanes just announced it three minutes ago too. Oh, okay. so it's official. That's a shame. He was. I thought he was good for them. Yeah, I think he was too. And and uh, I I have a question. Who is going to play for the Carolina Hurricanes next year? Why do you ask? Because like they don't have a lot of players. Oh, like and and Marty Nietzsche is not signed either. Your Radulov thing. Uh, just quick Google search. Uh, Radulov is set to make three hundred million rubles per year. <laughs> <laughs> and what year was that? This is uh, twenty twelve. That's not real. <laughs> That's not a number. You made that up. Yeah, no, that's not real. You made that up. <laughs> that was in 2012. That was around 9.2 million dollars per year. That's where I got the nine from. Yeah, yeah. Yo, <laughs> that's three. <laughs> Who the hell? No one was making. Maybe Ovechkin. 9.2 a year. It would have made him like the second highest paid player in the league. Maybe highest. Oh yeah, he's up there. So anyway, that's why he left. But yeah, that's that's a crazy conversion. Holy shit! And, that, and, and the yen is one hundred and thirteen dollars to one. Love wow. It. So, okay. Yeah. Do that. No, look up some more currency. <laughs> no, <I'll just laughs> the that's currency. the it's the currency trading show. That's yeah. what we do here. The kroner's like ten. Three hundred million rubles per year. <laughs> You're an NBA player now. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> what a cartoon! Why did he leave? Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, uh, something else interesting that's popped up in the last 24 hours is that uh, Tori Krug is uh, potentially looking at missing the entire season. Uh, he has pre-arthritic issues in his, um, in his ankle, and they're going to monitor it for the next six to eight weeks. And if he requires surgery, he will miss the entire year. And that is interesting and I get now why they signed Ryan Suter because I didn't before. And now that sort of makes a lot of sense because they probably knew this was coming. Yeah, but Ryan well, Suter's washed. He yeah, is washed. Like that's not <laughs> but the so, same. I feel but I think so are the Blues, right? Without Tory Krug, especially. Uh, I thought they had a decent offseason. Producer Hayden just like, yes, he is. Yeah, yeah. right? <laughs> <laughs> yes, he is. He's quite washed. Um, we now have a Minnesota Wild expert. Um, uh, <clears throat> I saw a lot of this going around. Um, there were there was nothing in the middle with this Tory Krug news. Mm -hmm. There was that's terrible, and I wish him nothing but the best. Mm -hmm. And oh, isn't that convenient? What in, in convenient for what? They tried to trade this player, and he blocked it. Yes, they wanted out from under that the contract that they actively pursued and chose instead of Alex Petrangelo. Yeah, and. There's now a scenario where you get all your money and you don't have to go anywhere. Fourteen million dollars in cap space they have right now with if crew goes on LTIR. If he goes on LTIR, right? Wow. I don't so think what, they would be announcing this if they weren't pretty sure. What's Doug cooking? I I think Doug Armstrong is not a stupid man. He already tried 
to get guys like um, who was he ended up in New Jersey, Timo Meyer. Uh, he that's he, right. This yep. guy sold to the Leafs and then tried to buy at the same deadline. Uh-huh. Uh, I think they're they want a quick turnaround here. Um, this like I think this is real. Oh, like, yeah. Th- this isn't made up like I, too many people are like, oh, that's made up. When Kucherov was LTIR'd by the Lightning, he was hurt. When Stone, he just he just happened to come back a few weeks after he was healthy. <laughs> yeah, like I think they waited. Yeah, I'm they sorry. waited. Like delay your health a week. Who yeah, cares? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> they waited. You know what? I could be even healthier. Yeah. Um, with uh, Mark Stone, every time he's been hurt, I don't. I've lost track. But every time the Golden Knights of LTI hurt him, it's been with a legitimate injury. Mm-hmm. The 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 easy comparable, or uh, maybe not easy, the, the one that you think of, or I can't help but think of, Marion Hosa. He he was dealing with an issue that made him allergic to his equipment yeah. or something for years, and he retired when his contract was designed to when it was designed for him to retire. Yeah, that injury becomes, ah, I can't deal with it anymore when you feel like retiring. Yeah, yeah. Hockey players play through heinous shit mm-hmm. for like the vast majority of their career. And uh, there are probably any number of stars in the league who could shut it down for like several years, if not retire right now if they had to i look at patrick kane when he sat out with his hip for so long Mm -hmm. i'm sure if patrick kane could wanted to play just push it a little bit more he probably could have yeah and not had like the full surgery and sit out all that time if he was like if they were on the if he was with the blackhawks at the end and they were on the verge of a cup and he's like oh you know what if i push it for five more months i could win another cup or something like that i'm sure he could do that but it was at the time of his career where he's like oh no this injury i've been dealing with for a while i'm gonna sit out Shea Weber and Carey Price were two of the most mm-hmm. important components of the 2021 Montreal Canadiens going to the Stanley Cup final and never played a hockey game again. Shea, uh, uh, Price played a couple. Nick Kiprios was right just early on Shea yeah, Weber. He was a yes, year early. He, he knew what, that Shea Weber was dealing with this and he was like, oh, Shea Weber may never play again, but Shea Weber just pushed through because Montreal needed him and they, he wanted to play. And then the, the injury was always there. It never went away or was never non-existent to a much lesser extent yanni hockenpah with the leafs they still have not officially announced that signing he may never play again he may play another 500 games yep um these guys play through heinous shit all the time so krug i think if he was in a situation that both parties were content with might play this year uh but i don't think that's the case but it's and also, he's also taking care of his health. Yeah, and yes. it also hasn't been announced either way. It was no, it, no. he's been diagnosed with the pre arthritic uh, whatever the, in his ankle. Yeah, and they're going to reevaluate in six to eight weeks. Like that was the announcement. Yes. It wasn't that he's going to miss it; it's that he might. But right. they're going to reevaluate. In eight Which weeks. means we don't find out till a couple weeks, I think, into training camp. Mm-hmm. And and that I think presents a really unique opportunity for the Blues because if they're looking at this season as Okay, we're going to do the best that we possibly can, mm-hmm. but this is really and truly a a build year, mm-hmm. right? If we squeak in, great, but we're this is a build year for us. Um, they can, if I'm, I'm looking at their their cap friendly or cap friendly. Oh my god, Puckpedia, um, and I'm looking at where they're at. So they've got you know they got two more years after this coming one of Bennington. Um, they've got uh, you know they've got Falk for three more years, Krug, Pareko for four. Nick Letty, their defense is looking old. You could potentially take back some some bad salary. You could take some like expiring deals. You could farm some draft picks and not necessarily use those draft picks mm-hmm. to draft. You can use those draft picks to get players. And they could be buyers at the trade deadline. Doug Armstrong's a very creative general manager. He's one of those guys that like of all the GMs are like, well, if I do something, I might make a mistake. So better not. Doug Armstrong's not that guy. And he's also built up enough currency with the ownership in, in St. Louis that I think that he can do things that other general managers just cannot do. Mm-hmm. And I am very interested to see how he augments Jordan Cairo, Robert Thomas, and I guess to a lesser extent, you know, uh, 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 Pavel Buchnevich, who's 29. Like he's got to build around these guys now. And I'm I think the Blues are going to be a story this year. Watch me work. Watch me work, Adam. 
do GMs make all the phone calls? No, agents do. Agents, well, and assistant general managers. Yeah. So who was Kyle Dubas's most common trading partner when he was with the Leafs? I'm pretty sure if it wasn't Chicago, it was St. Louis. It was the St. Louis Blues. Wow, interesting. Who's the head coach of the Leafs? Uh, Craig Berube, chief. So what do you what are you saying? I'm um, saying so maybe there's they're going to trade Craig Berube maybe, to the maybe, Penguins. <laughs> maybe stop flirting and kiss <laughs> with what? <laughs> but but what deal? What do you say? But Tree doesn't. I don't know if Tree trades with the Blues a lot. What what move are you saying? I don't know. Is there a move that a lot of Leaf fans are talking about? Uh, there, I know there's Marner's a writer going to the Blues. I know there's a. I know the Leafs Nation <laughs> blog really likes Alexi Torupchenko. Uh, I don't know. We're just gonna move on from the ridiculous assessment. Of no, no, no. He's, 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 I'm trying to add to it. Okay. Trying to put fuel in there. Okay. Uh, Torupchenko is 25. He's a right winger. Uh, he's also six foot six every single day when he wakes up. That's crazy. Who else on the Leafs plays right wing? Stop it. What? <laughs> Stop. What? I don't like what you guys are doing. What do you mean? What am I doing? You guys are putting words in my mouth. <laughs> I don't like what you're doing. Uh, I'm trying to propose a Cali Yarn Croak deal, and you guys are making it into something. Also, There's Adam said the Blues are going to be good this year. I No, I don't think they are. I think it's oh. a build year. 